what's going on everybody welcome back to another YouTube video I am super excited I know it's been like years since I posted a video uh, I've been very 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 busy as I'm sure you have too but I wanted to do something really cool because even though I haven't posted in like a month we are now at 2100 subscribers which is really cool YouTube ads are amazing and um, because of that I actually wanted to release a actual surplus fund mastery video for everyone to watch um, this is just one of the videos in the program. I wanted to um, give it out for free uh, just to let everyone that's not in the program because it's $2,000, um, let everyone see it and kind of see what's going on in there. Um, I also actually wanted to offer you guys something really, really, really cool. If you guys go to the link down below, um, it'll actually give you an opportunity to get uh, modules one and two of Surplus Fund Mastery and get a whole script and a whole course worth like $700 worth of content for 40 or for 67 bucks, I should say, not 47 bucks. Um, so if you want that, that's my deal to you for being a subscriber. And uh, congratulations, 2,100 subscribers, 21 years old. I don't know, I, I figured it was worth celebrating. Anyways, here's the Surplus on Mastery guy, uh, video, guys. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, I'm super excited about this one. This was a super important one called Scaling Your Life. And the same principles I'm going to be teaching in this actually apply to scaling your business as well. Um, and so it, it's all going to kind of connect the dots. Now, the cool thing about this video, too, is this is where we're going to get into the nitty gritty, how to apply stuff um, that we've been talking about, like the actual tactical approach to it which I know sometimes when you just talk about theory, and it's not really theories, but just kind of big concepts. It's like, okay, this is great, but um, you know, none of this really matters if you don't know how to apply it. So that's what this video is gonna really be about. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is that you need standard operating procedures. Now, if you don't know what a standard operating procedure is, that's actually a term that I took from like the military and from machinery and all that. Uh, it's basically daily routines. I'm kind of weird, I don't like to call it routines. I like to call it standard operating procedures, okay, SOPs. And I first learned about these when I was a failing uh, business owner. I was trying to scale my business. This business actually surplus fund mastery and surplus list. And at the time we were adding literally our best month at that time was like six members and it was just horrible. I was like, dude, like we gotta get our message out to more people. We're trying to help as many people as possible. This sucks. Like I wanna have more people joining because it's just better. You know, we can help more people if more people are joining. So, that was the idea. And, and the problem was is I couldn't scale because I was trying to do way too many things and I was, there was no system, there was nothing that, that was in place. I was just kind of showing up to work every day and I was just like, all right, let me just, uh, I think I need to work on the website. Let's work on the website today. And I was like, well, what do I need to do? Well, I think I need to do this. And it was just kind of like, there was no thought process to it. And I just was baffled. It was like, I, I was doing all the right things. It was like, you need to focus on sales, you need to focus on the, making the product the best in the world. And I was doing those things, but I felt like I never got anywhere because I didn't even know where I started, let alone where I got. And so what I learned very quickly is that if you want to scale your business, you need SOPs. Okay. And the same applies to your life. And so what SOPs are is SOPs, they basically become habits. Okay. And they, they get to a point of where you literally don't even have to think about it. They, they literally just happen. Okay. It's, it's just one less thing to worry about. And the cool thing about habits is they're triggers, okay? They're triggers that help you get into habits. And so the human body can get triggered by certain things. Like for instance, I love, there's this restaurant down the street, you guys might've heard me talk about this before, called Lucille's Barbecue. And it's this kind of expensive barbecue joint, but it's ridiculously delicious. And sometimes when I am leaving the office, I smell the barbecue and I'm like, I gotta go get some food. So I go over there, okay? And so that, that smell of barbecue triggers me to go into my habit of going to Lucille's, okay? And the same is true in, in a bunch of aspects of life. It's not just um, food related, it's business related, it's health related, it's all these things. So for me, like when I was recording this video and I had to redo it because of this, my stopwatch went off on my, uh, my, my not my stopwatch, my watch went off. I have an alarm set up for that. And um, it went off at 6 p.m. because it's 6 p.m. right now. And it's telling me I need to you know, finish what I'm doing here and go home. Um, because that's what time I go home. And so that's my trigger. Okay, boom, the alarm goes off. I'm leaving the office. I'm going home. I'm going to go eat. Okay. So that's how you can use triggers to really implement habits and SOPs. Okay. And I'm going to talk more about this. I'm actually going to show you guys my daily routine, my daily SOP. So you guys can see um, exactly what it is 
that I do every single day so you guys can kind of model it for yourself, okay? Now, next I wanna talk about is Kung Fu, okay? Now, I'm not a Kung Fu teacher, but I want to talk about uh, if you were a student of Kung Fu, okay? Because really being a student of Kung Fu versus being a student of surplus funds being a, versus being a student of anything, it's all the same thing, okay? So I wanna pose an example to you. If I was teaching Kung Fu, and it was you and another student, and you guys, when starting out on the very first day, you and the other student were identical in skill level. You were identical in IQ. You were identical in focus. You were literally equal in everything, okay? But the day before you came and actually started learning this stuff, you decided, you're like, I'm gonna learn how to throw the best punch until I throw the best punch in the world. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna focus on punches. That's it. And the other student decided, you know what? I'm going to come, and the first time I'm going to learn how to do a punch, then I'm going to learn how to do a kick, then I'm going to do like a backflip, like double punch, like I'm going to just be going crazy, okay? And, and they just did whatever they felt like doing that day. They had no rhyme or reason to it. Who do you think is going to get better faster? Do you think you're going to get better, better faster focusing on one thing, or do you think the other student's going to get better faster just doing a bunch of random crap, whatever he feels like? Of course you're going to get better faster, right? And the same applies to business, okay? When you focus on getting masterful levels of skill at one particular aspect, that is how you become very good at something, and that's how you make a lot of money from something. When you try to do everything average or even everything good, you're not gonna be very successful, okay? And so when you're coming in, just realize you don't need to learn all, it all at once, okay? That's why we have a pre-recorded program for you. You can go back, you can focus on getting really good at one skill, okay? And that doesn't mean you don't take action. You're still taking action. but you know, you go on there and you learn, okay, I want to do cold calls. How do I get really good at cold calls? You watch all of our modules about that. Then you go and you practice it. And the point I'm trying to make to you is you become the best you can be at that one thing and then you move on to the next thing, okay? So <clears throat> there's a quote that I kind of live my life by and that's, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. And so this next part of this video is going to talk about the standard operating procedures that I live my life by and um, kind of what my daily routine is and, um, this concept of plan TT, which I've mentioned now a few times, planning um, tomorrow today, okay? So planning tomorrow today, what exactly is that? How do we use it? Why do we use it, okay? First of all, uh, I'll explain this here in a second of exactly how I do it, but how I originally started doing it was just every night before I went to bed, just boom, just for 15 minutes, just write out what my next day is gonna be. It doesn't need to be 100% accurate because it's impossible, but you know, plan out what I'm gonna do tomorrow, okay? I lay out tomorrow's clothes. Every single thing that is gonna get done tomorrow is gonna get done, um, that, that I'm planning out, is all gonna get done and written down and calculated the night before, okay? And it's, it's even more extreme than that, and I'll get into that in a second with my new updated schedule, okay? Um, now, tactical. Now, people ask, okay, Spencer, should I plan out my next day with a Google Calendar? Should I plan it out with, um, you know, a journal? Should I plan it out with a Google Doc? Like, it doesn't matter, guys. Personally, I use a journal. Um, I don't use a journal as much anymore. I actually have an app on my phone, which I will show you guys in a second here what that is. Um, and then I, um, I also just use my whiteboard. I love whiteboards. I have whiteboards here in my office that I write down everything on. So that's how I get it. This is not exactly how you do it. It just needs to get done. Okay, so you're planning out exactly your full schedule the night before down to every 15 minute intervals, okay? And by the way, if you're sleeping for eight hours, you don't need to write sleep like 48 times, okay? You just write sleep from, you know, like my bedtime's like 9 p.m. to 4 a.m., okay? Uh, or whatever your, your bedtime is or whatever, okay? And your, your, everything is laid out in easy to understand intervals, okay? Now, when it comes to work, a good um, habit that I like to use and hopefully that you guys use is getting, moving the biggest boulder first. So the first, when you first start working, it's when you have your most energy, it's when you're most able to focus, you should be doing the hardest stuff first. And then, don't check your email when you wake up, it's stupid, okay? Check your email at the end of the day. You don't have time, okay? You know, you're not as focused anymore, you're tired, you're fatigued, that's when you check your email, you do all the stupid, easy stuff, okay? Or the, just the monotonous stuff, okay? But when you're first getting started, it's like, you're like, I need to get really better at cold calls, like focus on that first, right? Okay, and then finally, is the single reason why so many people have to work a nine to five is because they need someone else telling them what to do and when to do it. And if they didn't have that, they would simply do nothing all day, okay? How many of you guys right now that work a nine to five, and let's say you work five days a week, and you get to Saturday, you're like, Oof, and you just like do nothing all day Saturday, okay? Because personally, I'm not like that. I have to always be doing something. Even if I'm tired, maybe I'll take a couple hours off, but I have to be doing something, okay? 
And so I'm not saying that if, you, if that's you, that you're a bad person, that's not true at all, but I'm saying that in order for you to be successful in this business, you need to become your own boss. And people are like, oh, that's my dream. It's like, well, yes, but you need to understand that if there's no one telling you what to do, there's also no one holding you accountable. It's another reason why, for the group, okay? You can say to people, hey, I'm slacking off, please keep me accountable. You should have accountability partners, maybe we'll do something like that in the group. Um, but you need to keep yourself accountable. And that's how you do it with this journal. You plan it out the night before and you know, okay, hey, I failed to do this, I failed to do this, I failed to do this. What am I doing wrong? Well, I'm spending all this time on Instagram. I'm not just not being disciplined. Okay, well, I need to fix that, right? So that's the idea behind plan tomorrow today, okay? And so what's the kind of the big goal with these SOPs and plan TTs, okay? The big goal is, is focus, okay? I wanna do zero thinking in the morning. Like when I get up, I wanna have my clothes picked out. I wanna have every small decision already made. What I'm gonna eat, which I'll talk to you guys about my diet, okay? Um, everything should already be decided. So I can save all that energy and focus for what actually matters, which is my business, okay? Um, and that's the important part, okay? And then speed, too, is I don't wanna spend time thinking about things in the morning. I just wanna to get to work quickly and efficiently and, and all of that. And I, I don't know if I'd mentioned this to you guys yet, but how much are you worth an hour? You know, for me personally, like my goal is, you know, it's gonna sound crazy, but I wanna have a billion dollar company, okay? And in order for me to have a billion dollar company, my, my worth per hour has to be like two, three million dollars. And so if I'm spending an hour of my time, you know, picking out what clothes to wear, <laughs> okay? Um, I, I'm not gonna get that done. Like I'm not gonna get to that level, that value per hour that I'm trying to get to. And so it's all about speed. Now, maybe your goal is not to be a billionaire, and that's okay. Your goal is whatever your goal is. But you need to understand that even if your goal is to make $10,000 an hour, or excuse me, $10,000 $10, a month, um, $20,000 a month, $100,000 a month, like your, your value per hour is going to go way up past $20,000, $30,000, $40,000, $50,000, $100 an hour. Okay? $100 an hour, eight hours a day, it's $800 a day. Okay? That's only like $25,000 a month. Okay? I know it's a lot of money. It's not that much money. Okay, I'm just letting you know. It's not that much money, okay? And yeah, so that's important. Okay, speed's very important. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys my kind of um, daily SOPs here and my daily routine. Let me pull this up for you guys. I will also link this down below so you guys can check this out. And this gets updated too fairly regularly. So I have a couple different ones depending on what day of the week it is. If we come here and we go to... Okay, so... <clears throat> um, and you can see I edit this every so often, every couple weeks, just when I'm changing things up. So daily SOP, okay, this is my Monday through Friday SOP, and honestly, Saturday too. I have a Saturday one on here, but most of the time I just do this. Um, so yes, and mine is kind of extreme. I, I understand it's gonna be a little extreme, and um, you don't need to be this extreme if you don't want to, but again, I'm trying to be a billionaire, so I'm a little extreme with it, okay? First of all, okay, what time do I wake up every morning? 4.30, am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. Should you wake up at 4.30? Absolutely not, okay? And the reason why you should not wake up before 4.30 is because you don't know what your sleep chronotype is. So um, when you guys are done with this video, you need to go on to Google, you need to type in sleep chronotype, okay? And you need to come here and there should be this link right here, the powerofwhenquiz.com. And it's gonna tell you one of four sleep chronotypes you could be, okay? Now there's, again, there's four main ones. They're named after animals. There's the wolf, the dolphin, the lion, and the bear. I'm a lion. Okay, lions are supposed to get up at 4.30 a.m., okay? If you're a bear, you should not be getting up at 4.30 a.m. Now, I don't want you to think that if you're a bear or you're a, lion or you're a you know, wolf or a dolphin that you can't be successful. You can't, okay? Jeff Bezos, the richest person on the planet right now, is a bear. He's not a lion. So it's just about figuring out what time you're supposed to wake up and, and waking up at that time. See, when I grew up as a kid, I was always told from my dad and all this that, you know, I should be focused on um, waking up early because that's what's important and you just got to wake up early um, you, you're just gonna work super hard in the morning and thankfully that worked for me because of my sleep chronotype but if I was a bear or a dolphin or a wolf by the way a wolf is the opposite of a lion you should be working late not early um, I would be screwed because I'd be working at the wrong time I wouldn't be able to focus so keep that in mind okay so I wake up at 4 30 and I go through my morning slash pre-gym SOP and I'm gonna go through what these are in a second here and uh, I'll talk about that, okay? Then from five to six, I go to the gym. I'm a uh, member over at 24 Hour Fitness. I go there and I lift, and if I'm not lifting, I'll usually you know, shoot around basketball for 45 minutes, but I lift four days a week, okay, for anyone that's curious. From six to seven, I do my post-gym SOP, which again, I'll show you what all these SOPs are in a second. Then from 7.30 to eight, I am driving to the office. Uh, I've got my workflow SOP that I literally have above my computer, so it's the first thing I do when I walk in. 
Then from 8 to 1 p.m., I'm, I'm um, doing my, my block time. Now, block time is when you're just focused, you're working, you're not checking your phone, nothing, okay? And this is the high priority activity that I need to do that day. So for instance, for me, it might be creating a new, um, what would it be? Like, a create, like creating these modules, like this is high priority. Now this is taking me all day because it's a long project, but you get the point. I'm coming in, I'm doing this the first thing because it's high priority, okay? I'm not checking my email first. It's not high, that's low priority, okay? Then from um, eight, uh, from one to two, I'm eating lunch, and honestly it's about one to 2.30 because it takes me a little long. I'll go over my diet here in a second if you guys are curious about it. It's very extreme, so um, just to let you know. Um, and then if necessary, I'll work out for 30 minutes, like not at the gym, just, you know, whatever. Do some push-ups, do some burpees, whatever, because if I'm a little drowsy or something, that's what I'll do, okay? Um, 2 to 6 p.m., I'm back, and I'm doing my block time again. Um, this is the low-priority task, or if I have more high-priority, like today, I'm going to continue doing that and push off my emails till tomorrow. Um, so it's just about getting stuff done from 2 to 6, which gives me 4 hours of work time plus, what is this, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. It's like 9, 10 hours of work per day. Sometimes I'll stay until 7, but I try not to. From 6 to 7, I, I leave. I do yoga. I don't do boot camps. I need to take that out. I do yoga occasionally. Um, I read most of the time, listen to podcasts, and I really just kind of meditate and unwind. This is the time I'll go and I'll play basketball too because it's very meditative for me. But when I say meditate, I don't necessarily mean play basketball. I literally mean sit in the chair and meditate. And I'll talk about that. And then from 7 to 8.30, I'm doing dinner slash family time. I'm planning my next day. And um, then I'm doing my bedtime SOP. And I'm in bed by 8.30, no later than that. Um, and my bedtime is uh, like 9.30 latest, OK? Now, you see all these check-ins right here. What these are is I have an accountability group I'm part of that are other entrepreneurs. And so every morning when I wake up at 4.30, I send a picture of my watch that, to prove that I got up that, that early. And maybe I'll start doing that in the Facebook group too. I think that'd be kind of helpful for, for, uh, for some people. So I might do that too. But um, so I wait, send, send the watch. Then when I'm at the office, I send, I send the watch. Then when I'm um, meditating, I send the watch. Or when I'm done, see they're not meditating. Um, when I'm left the office, I send the watch. And then uh, when I'm in bed, I send the watch one last time, okay? Saturday is the exact same thing up until 1 p.m. And then at that point, I have the option to do whatever I like for the rest of the day. Most of the time, I just continue with this full schedule. Sunday, um, I have the entire day Sunday off until 6 p.m. because um, 6 p.m. is very important. The hardest part of getting up early is not getting up early. It is getting to bed early. Um, so I have to keep that, that in, in check if I want to wake up early on Monday. So I still go to bed early and all that. Um, Saturday, sometimes I'll stay up late, but it just depends, okay? Now, you guys saw the schedules. This is the, the SOPs that I, I basically have in my schedule. Okay, so I'm gonna go through each one here. So when I first wake up in the morning, I listen to my affirmations slash read my alchemy of self notebook, which basically has all my goals and everything in there, who I am as a character, um, what am I trying to accomplish, all of that stuff. I drink 16 ounces of pure lemon water, uh, no ice, nothing like that, just cold lemon water, just chug it down. I do my body stats, so I weigh myself every single morning. I um, get my body fat percentage, I get all that. Okay, I drink a ginger shot and a green juice if it's available. If not, I'll do it later. I literally am so down to the nitty gritty of this SOP. Like, I have deodorant. Okay, and I don't have the other one though. Brush, teeth, okay? Then I get my BCAAs, then I drive to the gym and I listen to my affirmations. And I'm gonna go ahead here and down below, I'm gonna play one of my affirmations for you guys. How I do it, because affirmations are kind of boring just to say out loud to yourself, and I like to get into it. So I love hip hop music, and I love 90s hip hop music and modern rap hip hop music and all that. So I recorded my affirmations on a, um, on just a recording on my computer, and then I put them over like rap instrumentals, and I play that on the way to the gym every single night, and so, or excuse me, every single morning. And so I'm going to um, go ahead and, and leave one down below for you guys to listen to. And, um, you know, obviously it'd be kind of weird if you listen to my affirmations and you actually listen to it every day because it's not you. But just to give you some inspiration on how I do it, you can go ahead and do that, okay? Um, then when I get back from the gym, I drink a, a Huel, which I'll talk about this in a second. This is a meal replacement shake that has to do with my diet. I take my shower. I do my daily hygiene, which is like shave, brush my teeth again if I need to, like whatever I need to do. Then I do my stretch SOP, which is down here. I'll get to that in a second. Um, then I do my, what's it called? The, um, the spray, the, um, not the, what's the stuff that, it's not deodorant. You guys know what I'm talking about. 
I don't know, like the Calvin Klein spray I have that makes you smell good. I don't know what the hell it's called. And then uh, I make my bed and I pick up the mess in my, you know, basically where I live. I just make it look nice in there. And it's always pretty nice and tidy because of that. Then I drive to the office, okay? When I get to the office, um, this is what I do, okay? I put another Huel in the fridge to drink later. I um, have water and tea that I get and I drink with me. I've put my phone on airplane mode so no one can talk to me. I turn on my diffuser with the scent Put on the, fu the diffuser with the scent frankincense. Um, frankincense helps you focus, and it's, yeah, it's like, this is kind of extreme, guys. I don't know if you need to do this part, but that's what I do. Then I meditate. When I meditate, I focus on the word, um, this, I've meditated a couple different ways, but really what I've been doing lately is just focusing on saying the same word over and over and over and over again in my head, so I get really, really, really good at focusing on things. And um, that's what I do when I meditate for 15, 20 minutes. I'm up to like 25 minutes now. Uh, and then I turn on my Focus by Neural Beats, which I'll talk about that later if you guys want me to. Just ask in the Facebook group if you want to know what that is. It's just like a, a beat that helps you focus, basically. You put headphones on and all that. And then I kind of view my daily actions, my plan TT from the day before, and I get to work. Okay, that's what I do when I get to the office. Okay, now, <clears throat> so you'll see that will get us up to, we've done the morning, the pre-gym, we've done the post-gym, we've got to the office, we've done my office routine. My lunch routine, literally I go home and I'll talk about my diet, but I eat the same exact thing for lunch and dinner, and I eat the same exact thing every single day, uh, unless I go out, which is maybe once a week, okay? And then um, after work, okay, um, when I get home, I've got my plan TTSOP, which means I'm getting my juice and my vitamins, my supplements ready for tomorrow, putting them in my fridge, um, getting everything ready, okay? I'm picking my clothes out for tomorrow, laying them out, so I can just jump out of bed and throw them on. Um, I've already done my next day work schedule. I do that before leaving the office. I put it on my whiteboard and I put it on my phone on an app, which I'll show you guys here in a second. And um, my next day eating schedule, I actually don't do this anymore because my diet is so, like it's just the same thing over and over again. I don't have to think about this anymore, which is awesome. And then I do my workout routine for the next day. Um, I just wanna have that planned. I'm not at the gym trying to figure it out. Um, and then bedtime SOP. So before I go to bed, what do I do? Is I, I get some hot tea, okay? Typically I like peppermint tea, Bedtime tea from Trader Joe's is very good. I take melatonin and magnesium uh, supplements right before bed. Take a nice hot shower, obviously. I do my stretching routine again, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, <clears throat> don't know why this is here. That's confusing. That threw me off for a second. Um, I read my goals and um, yeah, my goals and my, um, my affirmations again. I listen to them again. And then pray and gratitude. I pray. I'm a I'm a God-believing man, so I pray, um, and I just say thanks for whatever I'm thankful for that night, and then lights out, I'm, I'm going to sleep by 9.30, okay? So stretch SOP, okay? Um, what am I stretching in the morning? What am I stretching at night? Why am I stretching? First of all, is I'm, as I mentioned before, I'm tall. I'm about 6'5", and I played basketball for a long time. I've sustained numerous injuries, more than just the ones I've talked about, and uh, I still try to play basketball nowadays, um, and I'm just too old, unfortunately. Um, but... Because of that, I, I have a lot of knee pain, I have a lot of back pain, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm just super, super, like my muscles are just really, really, really tight. And so I spend a lot of time, this is kind of overkill, this is like 30, 35 minutes of stretching, but that's just because I'm really trying to loosen everything up and be more comfortable. Um, for you, I would still recommend you stretch. I will tell you which ones I think you should do unless you have back pain like I do. And by the way, I started stretching within two weeks, basically all my back pain went away. Okay, so this stuff's really powerful. I never got into stretching before, but uh, I just started taking it really seriously and, and I've really become a lot more flexible because of it. So the first thing I do is I do a lumbar stretch, which is basically when you're sitting at the edge of your bed and or the edge of a couch or the edge of a seat, whatever it is, and um, you're just basically taking your head and trying to put it all the way down to your toes. Okay, you're bending over and you're, and you're stretching. Okay, you're stretching that, that lower lumbar. Now you don't want me doing that, for 10 seconds each, five sets of each one, okay? That's it, you don't wanna do it more than that because it's just not a good stretch to do for 30 seconds at a time like the rest of them are. Then I foam roll, I foam roll all of my uh, legs, all my leg muscles out, I don't do anything other than my legs, I know I probably should, but I just focus on, on that, okay? Then I do the couch stretch. Now the couch stretch, you do probably not need to do because again, I have really, I have a patellar tendonitis right now and um, yeah, you, you probably don't need to do that. That's like that stretch is like designed to fix that problem. So unless you have patellar tendonitis, 
don't really worry about it. If you do, look it up. I'm not going to spend much time on it. Okay, calf stretch. Everyone knows what the calf stretch is. This one I would recommend that you do. Um, basically, what you're doing is you're putting one foot in front of the other, and you're making sure that that back foot is locked out, and then you are um, – you're literally just stretching out that calf muscle for 30 seconds each, each side, three to five sets. Okay. Quad muscle. I do the sprinter stretch, or excuse me, the quad muscle, something else. The quad muscle. What I do is, um, uh, I used to do the, the standing, you're grabbing the, um, the, the, the foot and you're bringing it all the way back to like where your lower back is and to stretch the quad muscle, but that kind of hurts my knee. So now I lay flat on my stomach and I do the same thing to give you some more stabilization that I recommend everyone do, does. Runner stretch is the basic one where you're sitting down and your, your one leg is extended and you're trying to grab that one leg and um, touch your toes, which by the way, when I first got started, I was about four inches off of touching my toes. Now I can easily touch my toes. And again, it took me like maybe two weeks to get to touching my toes. It's, it's actually insane. Um, and then the last one is the butterfly one. Um, that one's pretty important too. So I would recommend if you're doing this, I would definitely do quad runners and butterfly. Calves is a nice one as well. But I do recommend everybody stretch every single morning because you're just going to feel a lot better throughout the day. Okay, knee SOP. You guys don't need to know about this because this is um, what I do to keep my knees in check now since I got knee problems. So that's not really important. I don't need to share that. But that's pretty much it, guys. Those are my SOPs. Um, that's how I do it. Now, as far as eating, my eating is really good. We're going to go back to the slides for that. So we'll go back there. But my diet's really, really simple, and it's it's not very complicated. So. Um, and it's a little extreme, but I'm going to talk about diet in a second here because it is important. So, yeah. All right, guys. So my diet, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because it's super simple and it's also kind of extreme. So I'm not saying you need to follow this diet, but I do think you should follow the principles behind this diet because it's pretty important um, that you do something similar to this. Now, mine is, again, a little extreme because I just, again, I'm kind of crazy. But um, for your personal goals, even with just getting started out, you need to do something similar to this, okay? The first thing is I do not actually eat physical food until 1 p.m. So from when I wake up to 1 p.m., I'm basically fasting. Now, I do consume calories, okay? Don't just not eat, okay, unless you're trying to do like a cleanse or something, but don't, I'm not telling you to do that, okay? You need to go and talk to a medical professional if you're going to do that. Um, but you need to consume calories. So what I do is I drink green juice, typically have one or two, and then um, I drink heal and I always have two. Um, from when I wake up to 1 p.m. I have two heels and either one or two green juices, vegetable juices. Um, I usually have one I make at home, and I I'll have one that I, uh, I, I buy from Nectar. I spend a lot of time in Nectar. And also, too, another one that I forgot to put in here is occasionally I'll get like a smoothie from Nectar, but I'm not actually eating any physical food, okay? Now, at 1 p.m., I have lunch, and every single day I have the exact same thing. I have grilled chicken, I have brown rice, I have black beans, Okay? If for some reason I can't have this, I won't, but that's what I eat every single day, okay? How much brown rice do I have? I have uh, three cups of brown rice. I know that's a lot, okay? How much black beans do I have? I have one entire can of black beans. How much grilled chicken do I have? I have probably four to five pieces of grilled chicken at lunch, okay? Why do I not eat from, one, from when I wake up to 1 p.m.? Okay, the reason why is because your body can take up to 70% of its energy to... Um, to digest. And so if you're taking all of that energy, like we talked about, and you're using it to digest, you can't focus because you need to use your energy to focus. Okay. So that's why I don't eat because when your body, your body is able to process green juice, smoothies, and heal, which is a meal replacement shake. I'll show you guys in a second here. Super, super, super easy. Okay. Like it's not complicated at all. Okay. But when your body starts trying to, you know, take down red meat, especially, which I used to eat all the time, you know, really crappy food, like donuts and all that stuff. It's just really hard for it to break down, and it just slows down your entire system, which is why people feel groggy at like 2 p.m. right after they eat a huge lunch. So I try to eat very, very, very clean, okay? And then dinner, I eat the exact same thing, literally the exact same amount of rice, brown, three, three cups of brown rice. By the way, it's always brown rice. I don't think I've ever had white rice. Actually, no, that's not true. I've tried it once. I genuinely don't like it because I'm so used to brown rice. It's always black beans, by the way. I do not eat anything else, okay? And it's always grilled chicken. I do not eat anything else, okay? Um, and it's the same amount of each for each lunch and dinner, okay? Now, I eat a total of 4,000 calories a day, give or take a few hundred, um, depending on how big the chicken is and, you know, all that, but, and how much green juice I drink and all that. But um, the reason why I eat so many calories is because I'm trying to gain weight. I'm very tall, so I need a lot of calories to gain weight, okay? You do not need that many calories to gain weight, and you might not even be trying to gain weight, so you don't necessarily need to eat that much, okay? But 
Um, that's my diet, and, and you guys do not need to be this extreme with it, okay? You don't need to eat this exact same thing twice, okay? Every single day, seven days a week. But um, you do need to figure out how you can implement some sort of, not necessarily fasting, but just like meal replacement shakes are great. In fact, let me bring up Huel for you guys here. So Huel is really cool. Huel is my favorite brand. And look, if you guys are just getting started out in business, you don't have a lot of money, don't do this. But one thing I really recommend is this because it's really quick and easy. You don't have to spend any time making it. This ready to, uh, ready to drink one right here. Um, it comes out to like $3 a bottle, so it's pretty cheap. And so I personally, I love the vanilla. So I get four boxes of vanilla sent to my house um, twice, or not twice a month, uh, once a month. And there's in each box, there's 12 bottles. So 12 times four, it's 48 bottles. So that's not quite enough for two a day. Um, but usually on Sundays, I won't um, drink Huel and I'm a little bit more lenient on my diet. Um, so I don't necessarily need exactly two a day, but that's pretty much what I do there. And then um, cool thing is, is like you can set up four weeks, two weeks, whatever. Again, if you're just getting started out, you do not need to do this whatsoever, but this is just a great way to get cheap meals in you. I know it seems like a lot of money. It's really not that much money when you factor in that per meal, it's like three bucks, like 338 per bottle. And you're gonna spend like four times that you know, minimum if you're going out to eat all the time. So it's a great way to save a lot of money and, um, and because this stuff is super healthy for you too. So, and it tastes really good. The vanilla is really good. I actually crave the vanilla one. Like it's, it's very good. So I recommend checking that out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my diet guys. It's really straightforward and I'm very strict and stringent on it. Like I said, I try not to break it at all. If I do break it and I go out to eat, I'll get a steak somewhere. Um, but that's about it. You know, I've tried to cut out the Lucille's as much as I used to. It's tough sometimes, but, um, yeah. And one thing I want to make clear too, guys, is like with all this stuff, like I am not perfect. Okay. I'm far from perfect. Um, and my goal is to get to that level, but I'm not at that level. And so if you come and you try this, you try my diet or something, which you should look into your own diet and figure out your own stuff. I'm not telling you what you should do here with your diet, but you know what I mean? If you try your own routine and it doesn't work for you right away, that's okay, okay? Let's say you make a mistake and you eat something, you eat a donut or something. It's okay. It's something in the world. Don't get down on yourself about it. Just, you know, get better for the next day, okay? So that's kind of the key here is um, really just trying to be as disciplined as possible and, um, you know, realizing that even if you break it once in a while, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Don't beat yourself up over it. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. I'll see you guys on the next video. I know this was kind of a longer one, but... Hopefully you guys enjoyed my detailed breakdown of everything. And I will link my SOPs down below as well as you guys can listen to that affirmation song. So take care, guys. I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, guys, real quick, I wanted to add this to the end of the video. People ask me all the time, what does my phone look like? And kind of what the deal is with that. And so I, my phone looks like, uh, and I can walk you guys through it. So this is my actual lock screen right here. Um, right there, I've got vertical and horizontal. You build companies, basically. Um, I keep my time in military time, just, and this is what you see when you log in. So not much going on here. I literally have a black screen as my background to eliminate distraction. On the bottom left here, you guys can see me, I'm holding onto it here. That's my bank account that's for Chase, okay? Um, I check that probably twice a day. Then um, right here in the second left, I've got minimalist, which is my to-do list. So I didn't, haven't updated this since yesterday, but if we come on here, we can see Boom, I can come on here and I can um, write out my to-do list. So if I pull up, I can put, you know, create course, right? And boom, it's in here. I can move it around, whatever I want. And then as I get finished, I can just swipe right, you know, take it out. And then if I shake the actual phone itself, it disappears. And so this is what I use as my to-do list. It's very simple, very sleek, as you can see. Not a lot going on here, just straight to the point, okay? Then I've got my Aura Ring app. Now, Aura Ring, if you don't know, it's a ring that allows you to track your sleep so you can maximize your sleep. I will put a link down below for you to check them out. They are pretty cool. They're like 400 bucks. So if you're just getting started, no need to get this. It's not mandatory at all. But for me, it says ring not connected. I'm not wearing it right now. Um, for me, I just want to track everything. So that's why I have this. And then on the bottom right over here, I have my spreadsheets that I can go in here and I can um, just check my numbers for the day and check other data that I keep and track like my weight and I, I track all my health and all that. So that's all there, okay? Now, from here, if you scroll over to the right is where all of my apps are. Now, there's a few missing apps on here, as you can probably tell. 
These are all the apps that I still have on my phone that I still use on a semi-regular basis, meaning I didn't want to delete them. Okay, settings, obviously you can't delete that. Health, camera, actually can you delete health? I don't really need health, but health, camera, photos, voice memos, find my iPhone, Uber, clock, wallet, calculator, Safari, messages. Now this is an interesting one. Messages, I actually do not get any notifications. So if you were to text me right now, literally nothing would pop up. If you were to call me right now, it would ring, but after it was done ringing, if I didn't pick up, even if you left a voicemail, nothing would pop up. It wouldn't even tell me that anyone called. I have to manually go and check, okay? Weather, obviously, notes, books, calendar, maps, and then the Wemo app is, um, it's basically for like a smart, like I have smart um, lights and stuff at home, and then my Gmail, okay? And extras, really everything in here is pretty basic, podcast, music, Vimeo, apartments and LoopNet and all that for commercial property. And then Relax Melodies. So Relax Melodies is an app I highly recommend for you guys to check out. It basically allows you to create your own mixes that help you fall asleep. So you can't obviously hear this, but let me see if I can turn this up here. Can I, can I play this? I don't, know, I don't know if I can play this while I'm recording, but regardless, um, it allows you to create different like mixes that help you sleep and help you focus. So I've got a sleep one, I've got a podcast one, I've got a reading one, two reading ones. I've got to focus one. And so while I'm working, I'll listen to these and um, just really get focused or, you know, wanting to go to sleep, I'll wind down to it. It really helps us. That's called Relax Melodies. And then this to-do list app is called Minimalist, by the way. So check that out. And then to the right of that, I've got our payment process. I can check our daily numbers, Google ads, how much we spent on advertising that day. And then Audible, I listen to books at 2.5x speed because you can get a ton of reading done in that time. So if I come here and play it, you'll see. Like it's going by really, 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 really fast because it's at 2.5x speed. So that's the idea there. And so that's literally it. That's every app on my phone. I don't have, you cannot install apps on this phone. I took, turned that off. And then one thing that you guys can't see on your screen, but I'm going to edit it in, is I have my phone. <laughs> it's kind of weird looking if you see it in person. You go to general, you go to accessibility, you go to uh, display accommodations, and I have these color filters on. And this is a part you can't see, so I'm going to edit this in. Now, okay, now you should be able to see it. That's what my phone actually looks like. It's bright red, okay? There's no color, it's really just red, and, and that's it, that's the only color that comes off this phone, red and like black and white. So that, the reason why I have that is literally, um, you know, specifically for my ability to focus um, and to fall asleep. You know, blue light makes you stay awake, so I just took all of the blue light off. Now, yes, there is like night shift or whatever you can turn on, but that does not take all the blue light off. This does, okay? So that's why I have my phone as red, and hopefully that makes sense, guys. So I will see you guys in the next video as we continue on into module one. If you guys enjoyed this video, again, do not forget about the link in the description. Click that, you'll get taken to a page where you can literally get that video, in fact, a whole module and a half worth of service from Mastery, a $2,000 program, plus a full script that's 11 pages, professionally designed script to help you make uh, potentially grow a side income uh, with the power of state funds and a whole state fund mini course for 67 bucks. It's literally like $700, $700 not 70, not seven, $700 worth of content for 67 bucks. Um, and if you can't invest that in yourself and you're calling yourself an entrepreneur, I would heavily reconsider a career change. But anyways, with that being said, guys, click the link down below and um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So with that being said, have a great November. I probably won't see you again until like 2030 and I'll have like 20,000 subs by then. So <laughs> hopefully that's what happens. But uh, yeah, have a good one.